Hi, and welcome to a new semester of Griffin Update. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Jessica Stallard. And I'm Tanner Cobb. We've got some new additions to this show for you guys, like Do You Know Your Campus with Jessica, Jake's Sports Report, and as always, the Griffin Newscast. So, Tanner, how was your summer? It was pretty good. You know, like most college students, I spent a lot of time working, you know, but it's all good. How was yours? Pretty much the same. I worked a lot. I got a new car, so I have to make those Ooh. payments now. <laughs> Were you ready to come back to school? No, not really. I didn't want summer to end. Me neither. But one good thing about the start of the semester is all of the events going on on campus. I agree. There's always something happening. One of the bigger events on campus is the R Dam Bulware Convocation. This year marked the 26th year with speaker John Meacham. I was there to cover it. Well-respected, Pulitzer Prize winning, and New York Times best-selling journalist John Meacham spoke at the 26th annual R. Dan Bulware Convocation. Meacham's speech focused on knowledge and empathy while telling stories about past presidents and the history of America. One takeaway that many students had from Meacham's speech was that we need empathy in our lives to inspire others to be nice and to make an impact in our future. Student Jasmine Augenbog said Meacham talked about an important subject but made it fun with all the stories and jokes he told. I really like how um, he didn't like drone on, he actually like incorporated humor. I feel like he gave very good reasons as to like why these issues need to be addressed and why they're so important and how we can improve not only like our culture but our society. Meacham is best known for his biographies on past presidents. In his speech, he mentioned presidents Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, and George H.W. Bush, all of which played an important role in America today. The more generously we interpret what Thomas Jefferson wrote, when he said that all are great equal, that's the common denominator of the bright chapter. Students had a great reaction to Meacham's speech, believing that he had a great delivery and made important issues heard. SGA Vice President Nathan Scott said it was a really good convocation. So I would say that uh, John Meacham is definitely probably my, my favorite uh, speaker that, that I've been to. Uh, he's really, really personable. He seemed like he was really interested in the topic that we had. Uh, and I would say just it was, it was really cool uh, to be able to see him speak. He's very, very humorous at a lot of times. It was, it was just a very cool experience to see him speak. John Meacham left everyone to think about their curiosity and empathy towards each other. This has been Jessica Stallard reporting for Griffin Media. I've heard a lot of good things about him. Everyone seemed to love his speech. Yeah, I thought he did pretty good. One thing that I also like to do is go to musical performances. Oh, are you talking about Nellie's Echo's performance? Yep, sure am. Nellie's Echo was a contestant on The Voice and came to campus to do a small concert. Reporter Jordan Alford was there to cover it. I don't want to be rich and famous. That's irrelevant. What I hope to do is, by the time I'm done today, play my music and share my... Nelson E. Mope, known as Nellie's Echo, made a visit to Missouri Western last Thursday evening. Imope serenaded the audience with beautiful original songs and added a Nigerian twist to a few songs that made it from the Hot 100 list. Missouri Western student Milan Hayes told us how Imope's performance truly impacted her. So he started off by saying that he wasn't doing it for the money. He wanted us just to, he wanted us just to have a good time for this hour that we were giving to him because we wouldn't get this hour back. And so I just, I'm just going to take from this like everything, just be nice to people. You never know like how your interaction with someone can change them today. Like coming here, I'm sick as a dog, but like I'm leaving like, okay, I feel a little better just, just being in the atmosphere with him. Nellie was a contestant on The Voice, and though he didn't make it to the final round, he addressed the importance of defining success on your own terms. I have to get success on my own terms because the whole idea of Hollywood, it's a facade. It's not real, especially if, if, it's, if, if you get thrown into the engine and then it just kind of spins you around and spits you out as something that you are not. Right? So it's very important for me to get out when I got out to realize that, oh, that path was not for me. This is the path for me. 
this very visceral, very organic, very intimate pack. Nelly's Echo has an amazingly interactive show. He even allowed students to join him on stage while he taught them a dance that he believes is the next viral sensation. Throughout the performance, Nelly dropped some amazing gems that inspired many. Black President Narayan Reed Crawford says that she felt so good listening to his music and that it gave her lots of energy. Being here listening to him, he made me feel good. Like he's a very kind hearted person. Um, his spirit and his vibe is very good, so I felt that energy. So really, I just feel good with him being here singing and I can sing, so that was soothing to hear. And it also made me feel good because I can share that, that, that voice with him. It didn't matter if Nelly did a cover to a song or performed an original tune. Students just couldn't seem to sit still. But who could blame them? Stay tuned for more Wack Events. This is Jordan Alford reporting for Griffin Update. Wow, that looked like a really great show. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always great to see students getting involved. Yeah, speaking of being involved, are you in any clubs or organizations? I'm in a few of them, but I'm always looking for new opportunities. Well, there is a new organization called Young Life where students can meet others while also learning about Christ. It's interesting about how it started, and reporter Morgan Doyle has the story. <laughs> Every Sunday night, a group of around 20 to 30 students snack, socialize, play games, and hear a short message from Scripture at College Young Life. Sam Miller is a nursing major here at Missouri Western and doubles as a College Young Life leader. Kind of just hang out and then. Um, We'll have like a game, um, just fun little thing to break the ice and stuff. And then um, somebody will give a message, just like a short 10 to 15 minute message. Um, and this semester we're talking about contentment, um, so just going off that. And then um, we just hang out the rest of the time and just get to know each other, be in community. Young Life is a global organization and was brought to Western's campus in the fall of 2017 by Dave and Karen Hind after it had positively impacted both of their lives in the past. We had been volunteer leaders with high school kids and then our daughter went away to the University of Kansas and got involved with College Young Life and she loved it. And so we were like, hey, what if we got something going here on this campus. The club's main goal is to give students a safe, fun place to meet, hang out with friends, and learn about Christ. Especially for somebody who maybe hasn't had any experience with church or has never ever cracked open a Bible, it's not a place where you have to come and know anything before you can just come and make friends and be curious and ask questions and, um, mm -hmm. and you know, hopefully feel comfortable wherever you are on the spectrum of belief or non-belief. Along with Sunday nights, College Young Life offers a lot of different ways to get involved. There's a Bible study once a week and opportunities to go to Young Life camps during the fall and summer. Also, the Hines hosts lots of bonfires, game nights, and watch parties. The kings of the court have just arrived. There's a lot of cool college kids at Missouri Western and a lot of fun to be with. I just think there's a lot going on in your late teens, early 20s. You know, you're really trying to figure out what kind of person you're going to be, what kind of career you're going to choose, uh, what kind of person you want to marry, um, all of those types of things. And so I think my favorite thing is just to help college students make Christ a part of all those decisions. I would definitely um, say, like, step outside of your comfort zone because although it can be scary, like, it can also be, like, the best thing ever. You know what I mean? Like, it is just, it can impact you and change the course of your life. Like, I was super shy and didn't talk at all, and then now I've just um, stepped outside of my comfort zone and met so many awesome people who will be my friends for the rest of my life. <laughs> If you're interested in joining College Young Life, you can find them on Instagram and Twitter at MWSUYL. For Griffin Media, I'm Morgan Doyle. Coming up after the short break is Do You Know Your Campus? and a look at Pride Fest. A leading problem I faced is a misunderstanding on the part of students of the importance of academic advising. They miss appointments. They don't make appointments. But what's most disappointing is when they come unprepared. Give me a student with a plan in their head or better yet, on paper. We could talk about their interests, not just about their classes. We could discuss internships, classwork, grad programs. It would open the door to what advising is truly about. Can I help you? 
but instead they come to me in a panic when they need to what register you because- I need to talk to you? I was trying to register for my classes, but it wouldn't let me do it because I need my pin and I haven't had time to set up an advising, so I don't even know what classes I need to take. So I just signed up for a bunch of random ones and I'm gonna drop them later. So can I have my pin real fast? Because I'm still locked into a computer in the lab. Am I interrupting? Take ownership of your education. Make the most of your advisement by being proactive, punctual, and prepared. You'll open the door to more personalized attention and avoid costly setbacks. It's never too soon to begin planning your next steps at Missouri Western. Hi, and welcome to Do You Know Your Campus with Jessica. I'm gonna walk around asking students where things are on campus or who people are on campus. Let's check it out. Do you know who the current president of Missouri Western is? President Wilson, Big Hoop Wilson. Do you know when this campus was founded? A long time ago when it was Missouri Western State College. You got a year, any guess? No. <laughs> 1920. Five years off, 1915. Oh. Who the past president was? Was it uh, Joe? No, Joe, no, it wasn't, no, no. Where is the pod located? I don't know, man. <laughs> when was this campus founded? Oh, um, 2018. No, <laughs> no I'm playing. I think it was like, like 1915, right? Yeah, yeah that's really... correct. Oh, for real? Yeah. I'm smart. Hey, check me out. I'm cute too. <laughs> Hi. Did you get any of those? I got most of them, but the one about when campus was built, I had to guess. <laughs> well, study your campus history, and maybe you can get them next time. Maybe. Hey, did you go to Pride Fest this year? No, I didn't get the chance, but I heard it was a good success. Yeah, I think it was. Reporter Paige Griffey got into the action and tells us more. Pride is in full spring here in St. Joseph, Missouri. Every year in September, you'll find the LGBTQIA flag flying in Felix Square. This is a celebration for families, adults, and students alike. College is just a weird transitional era, and it's a great time for people to like find their own identities, and we just want to help nurture that and help people that may or not have had the chance to find their identity back home have a safe space to find it here. Not only students at Missouri Western, but also adults of St. Joseph are trying to get everybody involved. For Carlo Willis of PFLAG, her goal is to reach all audiences. PFLAG was actually started 46 years ago. It's a national organization that's mission is to support all LGBTQ plus people, their family, their friends, and their allies. Willis says to find out more information on PFLAG, email her at pflagstjoe at yahoo.com. This is Paige Griffey reporting for Griffin Media. Well, that's all we have for you right now. Stay tuned because Jake's Sports Report and the Griffin Newscast is coming up right after these messages. At Missouri Western, it's on us. It's on us, all of us, to take responsibility and stop sexual assault. To create a campus environment where everyone is safe and feels safe. To realize that ending sexual assault is not an individual endeavor. But a collective effort. To understand that it affects not only students, but faculty and staff members alike. At Missouri Western, we take action. It's on us to look out for each other and not look the other way. We step up and say something. We support survivors. We are going to be a part of the solution and not the problem. It's on us to intervene and take responsibility. So take action because we can and will make a difference. At Missouri Western, it's on us to, to put, put an, an end to sexual, sexual assault. assault. Begin by taking the pledge at itsonus.org. On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for my acts. I will always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve.
Welcome to the Griffin Update Sports Report. I am the freshly cut Jake Michael. Well, Griffin football picked up their second victory of the year last Saturday against Northeastern State. In Oklahoma, the Griffs had not one, but two 100 plus yard rushers. Markel Smith had 112 yards with four TDs on the ground, and the redshirt freshman Jared Scott had 110 yards and two TDs. The last time the Griffs accounted for two 100 plus yard rushers in the same game was in 2017 when Don Marino and Shamar Griffith did it against Emporia State. Their next contest will be against Washburn in Topeka this Saturday. And even though it is the fall, the Western men's and women's golf teams have stayed busy since the start of the semester. Recently, the women's golf team finished tied for sixth last Wednesday at the MIAA Fall Preview in Axtell, Nebraska. Freshman Alicia Gann tied for third individually. The men just finished seventh on Monday at the Kentucky Wesleyan Fall Invitational. Tom Buffington, Matt Toms, and Preston Ewing all tied for 31st individually. You can get your first look at the men's team as they'll head back home to St. Joseph to compete in the Holiday Inn Express Invitational on October 7th. And if you want to travel just a bit further southeast, you can check out the women's golf team compete in the Midwest Classic in Warrensburg also starting October 7th. Last but not least, the Western Cross Country team gave us something to get excited about. Now, neither team has been a disappointment by any means, but when new head coach Cody Engel got promoted on September 10th, some would wonder how long it would take before we would start seeing results. Well, I don't want to spoil anything, so let's have reporter Riley Reagan tell you more about what they did this past weekend. Saturday morning was usually cold and wet for the end of September, but that didn't stop the Griffin men and women's cross-country teams from prevailing. First off was the women's race where Western junior Megan Gillen was the top runner with a time of 19 minutes and 46 seconds. Gillen cruised through the course with no opponents in sight. Junior Kelsey Cox finished in fourth place with a time of 20 minutes and 44 seconds. The Griffin women finished with a team score of 26 to win the meet. I think we're racing really well. Um, I know there was a really, really good pack like all throughout the race and so you always race better when you're racing with your teammates, so everyone's working really well together. Next up was the men's race where freshman Ian Kibbett and sophomore Andrew Wright started out in the lead. Kibbett finished in second place with a time of 27 minutes and 10 seconds. Wright finished in third with a time of 27 minutes and 14 seconds. The men's team finished with a score of 25 points to put them in first place. I thought we were well there too, you know, um... Andrew and Ian got out a little bit hard and paid for it in the, in the long run, but I think we ran well and, um, you know, if we could do it again, we'd race a little bit differently, but they're young and that's, you know, mistakes are going to be made. Presentation on October 12th and with conference on the 26th in Joplin. This is Jessica Stallard reporting for Griffin Media and Riley Reagan. That's all we have for you today. For more information on all the latest news, scores, and highlights on all things Missouri Western Athletics, check out GoGriffins.com. Also, don't forget to tune in to Griffin Update Sports next week. I'm Jake Michael, and I'll see you next time. of every four car accidents are caused by texting and driving. Wait, what did you just say? You heard me. That's better keep your eyes on the road. Coming up on the Griffin Newscast, ResLife is looking into complaints from students and a look into some changes that President Wilson is planning to make. All that and more coming up next. The Griffin Newscast starts now. Students have been complaining about the lack of hot water in the res halls. After I had a chance to take a deeper look into the issues, I was able to bring to you this story. Take a look. Students have reported that there have been many complications with the maintenance of the residence halls. Residence Hall Director Sam Wimple says if students are having issues, they need to speak up. We have to know. Uh, I had a previous supervisor that always said closed mouths don't get fed. But yeah, it's one of those things like we can't fix an issue if we don't know about it. Director of the physical plant Brian Atkins informs students that they need to put in a work order no matter how big or small. Please let us know mm -hmm. if we have any more because we need to make those corrections. Um, we want to make those corrections. So it's just use advice, whether it be your sink, whether it be your shower, 
whatever. We need to know if you're, if it's just extremely hot or, or you're getting, you know, really cold water a lot. So we just need to know that. It's probably a simple adjustment that we can fix, but we just, we need to know. This is Jordan Alford with the Griffin Newscast, signing off. President Wilson has only been at Missouri Western for a short period of time, but he's already made many changes to the campus community, and he has more planned. Some things that Wilson has looked into changing include campus beautification, recycling, going more digital, and educating students on being safer on campus. Wilson is always open to suggestions from anyone and everyone. On my webpage, on the website, you know, there's a place where there's a feedback forum that people can continue to, to provide feedback. Um, and I've taken probably 45 to 50 pages of feedback from staff and faculty, students, you know, alumni. Um, and, you know, as, as we look at those things, you know, we're trying to address a lot of those things to make Missouri Western even better. Um, and, and we're making progress. For more information on what Wilson is looking into, check out Chats with Matt in the Griffin News. Missouri Western held their annual band book event and gave the community the chance to dig into controversial stories. Griffin News' Kathleen Woods has more on the story. Missouri Western hosted their 23rd annual band book event on September 26th. The First Amendment protecting free speech should also cover books according to a student who attended. It should be protected under the Constitution, like the free speech. It's like, if you don't like the book, just don't read it. Children's books were also on the banned book list for inappropriate content. I feel like um, there's a level of ridiculousness, ridiculousness in the number of children's books that are being um, targeted as inappropriate. Most books that you love have or could be a part of the banned book collection. And I said, well, how will I know if it's been challenged? And typically I say, well, if you love it, somebody doesn't. And I'm sure that somewhere somebody has challenged it. This is Kathleen Woods with the Griffin Newscast. Homecoming week is on its way to Missouri Western and will be starting on Sunday, October 6th. Some of the things that students should be looking forward to include a movie night, a silent party, community service opportunities, the annual blood drive, and much more. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Griffin Newscast. Stay up to date with all the campus news by picking up a copy of the Griffin News or check out their social media. That's your news in five minutes. I'm Jordan Alford. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on MWSU TV Channel 12. You can also catch us on the Griffin Update Vimeo and YouTube channels and the Missouri Western Student Media homepage. And make sure you check out the next edition of the Griffin News. From all of us here at Griffin Update, thank you for watching.